Today I'm going to be talking about the UK CAT, the United Kingdom Clinical Aptitude Test, which is an entrance test used by the vast majority of British medical schools for entry to undergraduate medicine. The UK CAT was brought into practice in 2006 and is primarily intended to function as an aptitude test, as the name might suggest. It was introduced to act as a further distinguishing factor between applicants who increasingly had better and similar grades. The UK CAT consists of four different sections, verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning and decision analysis, each of which I'll address in turn. The verbal reasoning section of the UK CAT is designed to assess candidates' ability to analyse key texts and extract logical conclusions from them. It consists of 11 texts of about 200 to 400 words in length. The content of the texts may not necessarily be related to medicine, they cover a wide variety of topics. For each individual text, you'll be given four statements to which you may answer true, false or can't tell. For an example, here's one I made earlier. From the academic year starting in 2012, students in England may now face up to £9,000 in tuition fees. This decision comes after Liberal Democrats leader Nick Clegg made promises not to raise tuition fees, a promise which has resulted in mixed reactions from the general public. Many people have expressed their concerns that the tuition fees may result in mountains of debt and were quick to criticise the decision, noting that other countries in the European Union charge little or no tuition fees. Germany in particular receives high student satisfaction in regards to tuition fees, but the same cannot be said for other countries such as France and Spain. The first statement is as follows. Students in England are disappointed with the decision to raise tuition fees. True, false or can't tell. Pause the video and have a think about this and then restart it when you're ready to hear the answer. The answer is can't tell. While we know this to be true, conclusions must be derived based on solely on the information in the text. Though the text notes that the general public has expressed concern, there is no mention of students in England being displeased. Second question, or statement. Germany charges little or no tuition fees. Again, have a think about this and then restart the video when you're ready to hear. Again, the answer is can't tell. This may be the case, but the only information we're given is that students in Germany are satisfied in regard to tuition fees. There's no mention whatsoever of how high or low they are, which is just as well because I've made this question up and have no idea about tuition fees in Germany, let alone France or Spain. Okay, so that was just a quick example I made up based on my own experiences of the test and revision materials. It may not completely reflect what's in the test, but you get the idea. The actual test will be a bit longer, and there will be four questions, not two, and you'll have 11 texts. If you want a good place to start doing revision, then I recommend buying this book, the 600 Questions book. It's got loads and loads of practice questions, probably more than you can do, and has an introduction on each section, and it really explains everything really well. Uh, so get it. Amazon. The only one thing I would say is that the quantitative reasoning section of this book is far more difficult than the actual test is. Um, when you're doing this, if you find that you just don't have enough time to answer the questions, don't worry, the actual thing isn't like that. If I had to give one piece of advice for this section of the test, it would be to take your time reading all of the texts and make sure you've understood everything clearly. It's better to do this because it will save you time in the long run. If you rush the text and then get onto the questions, you'll find that you have to refer back to the text and then waste time trying to find the relevant points, which is time consuming and could cost you a higher score. And one last thing, the time given to answer all 44 questions is 22 minutes, 21 to answer the questions and 1 to read the instructions at the beginning, which translates to just under 2 minutes per text or 30 seconds per question. The quantitative reasoning section of the test consists of nine different scenarios, consisting of numerical data presented in the form of a table, chart or graph, though sometimes a piece of text. For each scenario, you'll have four questions requiring you to carry out some form of calculation or interpretation of data to get the right answer. And for each question, there are five possible answers. For the quantitative reasoning section, you get 23 minutes, one for reading the instructions and 22 for answering the 36 items. 
This translates to roughly just under two and a half minutes per scenario, or about 36 section, se uh, seconds per individual question. This part of the test assumes a familiarity with numbers equal to that of a good GCSE pass. So make sure you're up to speed on things like percentages, ratios, all these sorts of things. Get an old maths revision guide if you didn't take it to AS level, or even if you did, get one anyway. And go through all the topics in there and make sure you're good and familiar with all of them to be well prepared for this section. A good rule of thumb on this question, and indeed the whole test, is to work quickly and efficiently. The amount of time you have per question might not translate exactly in the actual test, and you might find yourself with less time than you think. If you can't answer a question, then there's no penalty for negative answers, so just guess. If you have to guess a quarter of the questions, then that would translate to roughly a 5% additional uh, right answers, because you have a 1 in 5 chance of getting each of those questions right. 20% of 25 is 5%, so it works out for the best. Again, I recommend this book, but as I said, be wary of the quantitative reasoning questions because they are a lot more difficult than the ones in the actual test. That said, some are easier than others, and there's lots of resources online, so don't rely purely on this book. There's another one, uh, this book you could use, I found this quite useful as well, and like I said, there's lots of stuff online, so search about. If you've already looked at the abstract section of the UK CAT and thought, what the hell is all that about, then you're not alone. In fact, I sometimes still think that. But essentially it's all about recognising patterns and sorting things into groups. The abstract reasoning section of the UK CAT consists of 13 different exercises, and in each exercise you'll be given two sets of shapes, set A and set B. Uh, set A, all the shapes in set A have something in common with, with each other, and all the shapes in set B have something in common with each other. For each exercise, you'll be given five different shapes and then asked whether they belong to set A, set B, or neither of them. So the first thing to do when you're looking at a question like this is to establish what the relationship between the shapes in set A are, or set B. If, for example, you found out that in set A, uh, there are all of the three-sided objects are black, whereas in set B, all of the three-sided objects are white, then once you've established the pattern, determining uh, which shapes go into which set is relatively easy, but the patterns are rarely that simple. Do a couple of practice questions and you'll see what I mean. As there are five questions in each of the 13 sections, that amounts to 65 questions in total. You're given 16 minutes to answer these, one for reading the instructions and 15 for answering the questions individually. That translates to roughly 70 seconds per section, or just under 14 seconds per individual question. Again, don't be afraid to guess on this one. I wouldn't be surprised to hear that this is the section where people score the lowest, because if you don't know the pattern, then you can rarely establish whether a shape belongs to group A or group B. Just guess if you don't have time, it's better than putting nothing. The decision analysis is the last section of the UK CAT, and is all about assessing candidates' ability to unravel information presented in an unusual or confusing way. It's essentially translating a code given to you in a table. All of the information you need to answer the questions is in the table, and you're given 32 minutes to answer 26 questions, which gives you an average of just over 70 seconds per question, which is quite generous. Uh, it's quite difficult to describe the table without seeing one, but a simple one might consist of... Uh, the letters A to M, and the numbers 1 to 23, each of which have a different meaning. The letters and numbers are then grouped together in a specific order to give a cryptic sort of message, which you have to decode and match to one of the answers. It can be quite difficult, but you should make use of the whiteboard provided to write things down along the way, and realise that you're not under quite as much time pressure as you are with any of the other sections. Personally, I found I had a fair amount of time left over um, in this section, whereas that wasn't the case with most of the other sections. Even though it's meant to be an aptitude test and therefore not something you can officially prepare for, you can still do a lot with, for yourself by trying a couple of questions beforehand to, one, uh, maximise your time management skills and to get the hang of the style of the questions. Once you've done a few, 
you'll know what to expect in terms of uh, the style of question and hopefully you'll get through the questions a little bit easier knowing how they operate. Each section of the test is marked out of 900 with 300 being the lowest score. At the end of the test the average of your four sections is combined into an overall score. The average mark for applicants is around about 600 points. Medical schools use the UK CAT in a variety of different ways, with some being more demanding than others. Often a cut-off is employed, whereby if you don't get above a certain mark, you are not shortlisted for interviews. At other places, it's a less important factor in your application, it's just taken into consideration with everything else, and getting a certain score isn't definitive by any means. Certain schools in particular, uh, for example King's College London, are quite demanding with it, in that they want a very high score in order to have a good chance as an interview but I think they use it as a sliding uh, scale with GCSEs I, if you've got really good GCSEs you don't need to have such a good UK cat if your GCSEs aren't so good then you need a really good UK cat to get an interview but in truth it's used in a in very different ways depending on the medical school you apply to so check the admissions criteria before you apply otherwise you might find yourself wasting a choice In terms of when you actually can take the UK CAT, it can be taken anywhere between the 3rd of July and the 5th of October. However, if you take it between the 3rd of July and the 31st of August, you only have to pay £65. If you take it between the 1st of September and the 5th of October, then you have to pay £80. My personal advice would be to take it earlier on rather than later. If you take it early on, you get your score, and that would allow you to make a more informed decision about which universities you might like to consider. It might rule some out for you, it might make some available for you. In short, it will allow you to tailor the rest of your application and hopefully work towards having a better chance at applying to certain universities because you know that you'll have a better chance at them with a certain UK CAT score. But um, that's just my advice, take it or leave it. Personally, I think one month to two weeks is sufficient time, depending on how much other work you've got. If you're doing it in the summer holidays, then you'll have more time in the day, so you might need maybe fewer weeks to get sufficiently prepared. However, if you're doing it during term time, you might not be able to fit as much revision in per day. But as a general rule, I'd suggest giving yourself a couple of weeks practice and try to do at least two hours a day. Okay, I think that's it for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and I'll do my best to answer them. In terms of further resources, try the official UK CAT website. Uh, you could also look at CAT Plan and ACE Medicine if you don't mind paying a little for questions. Uh, or you could go on Amazon and look for books like this one or this one. And good luck preparing. I hope this has helped. And for anyone wondering, yes, I did do this video in my pyjamas. <laughs>